Welcome back to another episode of The Shack Show, and in this episode, I'm going to be going over my terminal tackle. And what I mean by terminal tackle is my swivels and my clips that I use for surf casting. I use two brands uh, for my swivels and for my clips, and one of them is the, let's go over clips, I guess, first. Uh, one of them is the Tactical Anglers clip. Uh, I use a few different sizes of their clips, but let's just go over why I like them the most out of all the clips that I use. So here is a tactical anglers clip. Uh, it looks fairly similar to a, uh, fairly sim similar to like a paper clip, I guess you could say. Um, what you can see here is there is a end that is angled up and there's an end that's angled straight across. You want to tie your line onto the end that has the angled piece of metal. And uh, the reason for that is when we uh, clip, when we clip on a lure, let's just clip this guy on for now, just to show you a little demonstration of how this uh, works if you don't know already. Uh, when you clip on the lure, you put it through the angled side and you just pull and it will slide down into there and it can work freely and this being a spook, it will be able to work freely in the water and stay right there. So let's just show you again. And for taking it off, it's the same deal. You just push and it comes right out. So to go on, you go right where the angled piece is. It goes in. If the lure is free to work. And then if you want to change quickly, all you do is push and it comes right off. That's the beauty of anglers clips. That's why I use them because they're super fast and easy to work and use so uh, that's and they're also extremely strong uh, a lot of guys like different stuff I really go for durability here and ease uh, it's really easy to get most lures on and off the, the downside is there's a few lures especially ones that like poppers that have more cupped mouths that uh, you're gonna have a lot harder time getting a clip around uh, and off which can be pretty challenging, but you know, you'll get the hang of it. And uh, it's much faster than tying. I know guys are like, oh, I can tie an improved clench knot with my eyes closed in the dark, but realistically I can do, take a lure on and off three or four times before they're gonna be done, you know, tying and clipping things. So uh, that's gonna be at least, you know, a few fish that I will be able to get before they will be able to retie their line. So that's why I really like tactical English clips. And now you'll probably be saying to yourself, well, if I'm using a small spook when I'm surf casting or something that I need up on the surface, and does this impede the action? And it can, and that's another downside to it as well. The bigger the clips are, if you're working little lures, it will impede the action. That's why for the most part, I use the 75 pound clip. Uh, it's small and it's really strong. Um, I like this one because I feel like I can put any plug on it and fish in any scenario with any amount of drag and that's not gonna get bent out. That 75 pound clip is the strongest and lightest size in my opinion. They do make a 50, which is even smaller and I've caught some really big fish with this, but I've seen these bend out before. Um, so, and also over time, this does wear out a little bit when you're clipping plugs on and off. And they also make a 25 pound clip that I use in the spring. I think this is actually more for fly fishermen, but I do use this in the spring when I'm using small spooks and paddle tails and stuff. And uh, it's really awesome. You don't need anything bigger than this anyway for those uh, lures. So there you go. Um, this is the, uh, this is the uh, 125 pound clip. I don't use it too often. And the reason I don't use it is it's a little big for what I do for the most part. They do make bigger clips uh, and I would fish this if I was fishing large rig deals or something that you know I wanted to be able to clip on and off really easily uh, and that it really didn't matter uh, how big the clip that I'm using is and the eyelet of the hook is or where I'm hooking on my plug is huge. Uh, using a bigger clip like this uh, can help a lot. So that's why I use uh, tactical anglers clips and those are the sizes that I use. Let's just go over that again. I use the 25, I use the 
uh, 50, I used the 75 and then the 125. And in those clips, uh, they're extremely durable, extremely strong. I know a lot of people have a question about how you hook them up on your rod while you're walking around. So I can kind of demonstrate that here. Um, you know, there's many different ways you can do it. I've seen guys uh, clip onto the outside of their braided line here. And literally what I'm doing, hopefully you'll be able to see this, is I'm like I'm hooking on a plug, putting the line through that angled section, pulling it down. And what will happen is when you reel up, it will keep it just right against your eyelet and you can walk to your spot and then you can easily pop it off and it will work just fine. Although I have found doing that over time, I think it will eventually fray your, uh, you'll fray your line, your braided line, especially if you do it a few times with the braided line, but it won't fray your leader, your fluorocarbon or monofilament leader that you use. So um, that's why I put it around the, you know, the guide stem here and I just clip it on, on there. Um, and then, you know, I clip it on there the same way and it goes on easy and it comes off easy. I guess I don't really necessarily have to show you guys this, but I will anyway. See, there you go, clipped it on nice and easy. Clip it out nice and easy. Okay, say that your leader is too long. Let's just go over one last thing. Say your leader is a little bit too long here uh, and I'm gonna reel my swivel into the top of my, uh, my guide, which you don't wanna do. Uh, what I like to do then is extend or pull out some more line and I'll do the same thing, except I'll just put it around the reel handle. Hopefully you can see this. I'll put it right around the reel handle. I'll either clip it on here or I'll put it right here. And all I will do is the same deal here. Put it through there. And then all I gotta do is reel up. And there it is, perfectly secured. And then when I get to the spot, I can just take it on. So there you go. That's why I use TA, or that's how I carry my TA clips on my rods when I don't have a lure. Otherwise, I can, I'll do the same thing except just hook the, the lure through the side of the guide. The other thing I wanted to mention, and this will be more applicable to uh, the, the swivels, you don't wanna reel them and cast them out of the top of your guides because it will chip the guides on your rod. So don't reel them in for storing it, uh, or if you do, be very careful reeling them through the guides uh, because you don't want your guide to be chipped and you'll lose all of your plugs in your bag. Okay, so now we move on to the Spro Power Swivels. These are the greatest swivels. I love them a lot. Uh, they're fairly small and I use much smaller sizes. This is just the biggest size that I'd use to demonstrate. Um, they're fairly small. They're extremely, extremely, extremely strong. I mean, this one is 230 pounds and you can see that it's, it's really, really small. It's 230 pounds. Uh, it's very smooth and uh, you're, you'll never break off with one of these ever in your whole life. It's, it, will, it will just never happen where one of these will bend or break. It just doesn't happen. Even with the really small ones, it just won't happen, um, which is super, super awesome. And uh, what I like to do with these is I like to tie my braid onto one end and my fluorocarbon onto the other. Um, and I will go into a different, uh, in a different video, I will talk about the knots that I use and why I use them and uh, what lines I use them with. Uh, but that'll be a whole completely new video coming out soon. Uh, so stay tuned for that. I use the, well, on the biggest side, I'm gonna be using my 230 pound test swivel here. And then I will also be using my 130 pound test barrel sp spro uh, power swivel. And for the most part, that's what I normally use is the 130 pound power swivels. Those are kind of my go-tos. And then for the smallest swivels that I use, uh, and I use these in the spring mostly, I'll use the 80 pound power swivels and I use these in the fall as well. I've caught some seriously big fish even using the 80 pound ones. Um, they don't really bend out. I mean, I've never seen anything, any power swivels break. I'm sure you could put an extraordinary amount of pressure on them before they do end up breaking, but they're just super strong. They don't really rust that well. 
Um, and that goes for the tactical anglers clips as well. Uh, but again, as I was saying, when you make your leaders, try to make your leaders uh, in a way that you're not constantly reeling the, the swivel into your guide and, and casting it out because you will uh, chip your guides uh, and that is really bad because you'll lose all your plugs and you don't want that. Okay, the other thing that I know I'm gonna be getting comments about is, hey, why aren't you tying direct? Tie direct, tying direct is better. And what I mean by that is tying my fluorocarbon and tying my monofilament together in one go. And uh, the reason I don't do that is because uh, a blind twist. And a lot of guys are gonna be like, no, 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 you know, FG knots, uh, Alberto knot, uh, oh, there's a whole bunch of them. I tr Trust me, I've tried them all. Uh, they're great, uh, they do fail fairly often. Um, it is hard to get them perfect, and I know that there's like, for different pound test line, you know, there's a certain amount of twist and stuff. Trust me, I've tried them all. Uh, they work fine for certain lures uh, in certain scenarios, but for other stuff like live eels, they will twist up your line and it's just a mess. So that's why, you know, for many different plugs, as well as like different fish that you hook might start spinning and you'll end up getting line twists and it turns into a nightmare in the long run. So that's why I always use swivels uh, to just diminish the amount of wind knots and line twists that I get uh, because, you know, something that's hilarious is, you know, they call this thing a wind knot when your line just spontaneously tangles up for no reason. Nine out of 10 times is because of your line twisting up a lot. And what I mean by that is like if your lure or the fish is rolling over and over and over again, that hundreds and hundreds and thousands of times potentially, um, it will twist your line. And then what happens is when you cast, there's a little bit of slack and it'll all, you know, tie itself in a nice little knot. Um, and uh, you know, you'll break off and on fish, you'll cast your plugs out. It's just a nightmare. And so to diminish that, that's why you use swivels. And I just use swivels all the time, no matter what I'm using. I know there's, you know, I know people are gonna be like, you know, tie direct, but that's why I don't tie direct. Um, I know I'm still gonna probably get comments about tying direct, but you know, what can you do? So uh, hopefully that uh, answered your questions about the terminal tackle that I use and why. Uh, if you have any more questions, please leave a comment below. Um, if you have any ideas for other videos, I have a ton of more videos coming. Uh, please leave a comment below. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.